Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our project is a uh, collaboration of the Digital Pathology Association past presenter uh, known as the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our case today uh, is uh, one of those uncommonly encountered GI cases, a 55-year-old male with right lower quadrant pain. And as uh, may typically happen in such instances, uh, right lower quadrant pain and the appropriate physical signs led to an appendectomy. So when we look at the app appendix uh, under the microscope, we see here we've got the inked section showing the uh, uh, resection margin. We see some full thickness transverse sections and then the appendiceal tip. There's not too much of note here. The appendix is not dilated. There's no evidence of uh, uh, increased inflammation or serositis uh, on the serous uh, surfaces. Uh, but what we do see uh, here in the distal tip uh, are a couple of uh, pale uh, areas that look a little different than the usual germinal centers. Uh, here's an area here, here's some areas here, some areas here. So we'll go down and take a look at these uh, uh, more pale areas to see what may be going on here. Uh, within the lymphoid uh, population. Uh, we don't see uh, in the mucosal uh, areas any active inflammation, uh, but we do see these uh, clusters of uh, pale cells, um, and they have uh, sort of a histiocytic uh, type of appearance, a little bit of eosinophilic cytoplasm, some uh, maybe more pale cytoplasm uh, here. And we see there's really not too much uh, distinguishing them about them. There's some admixed uh, lymphocytes. Um, and uh, we see a few other uh, sort of eosinophilic uh, bodies and so forth. Let's look at the other areas here. Here's another area over here. A uh, few multinucleate cells. So these are not really forming tight granulomas. As uh, Dr. Compton used to say, whenever two or three uh, histiocytes go walking, that's a granuloma. So this might fit into the category of granulomatous uh, disease. Uh, and then let's look at this other area right here. Um, and I think here we start to get a little suggestion of something maybe a little bit funny, some sort of dark blue dots uh, in the cytoplasm of some of these histiocytes, and a little inclusion-like structures here. So um, we'll think about that for a minute, and uh, just to go we'll take a look at what the differential diagnosis of granulomatous diseases in the appendix would be. Of course, the most commonly encountered thing is Crohn's disease, uh, but that's usually accompanied by acute inflammation, maybe some fissuring ulceration, uh, and transmural inflammation of lymphocytes and other uh, disorders. So it doesn't look like that's uh, what's involved here. So-called interval appendicitis or post-treatment appendicitis uh, can uh, be have a granulomatous reaction, particularly if there's been any sort of uh, disruption of the mucosal barrier and fecal material has become uh, lodged uh, in the wall and therefore forming a uh, almost foreign body type reaction to fe fecal material. Sarcoidosis uh, also can cause a sort of appendicitis granulomatous appearance in the appendix, usually associated with more systemic disease and a fairly abundant, tight, uh, hard kind of granulomatous uh, inflammation. There is an entity called idiopathic uh, granulomatous appendicitis, um, which we won't comment too much about here. Uh, and then there are the infectious disorders, uh, most commonly mycobacteria or Yersinia, perhaps, uh, maybe actinomyces. Uh, as well as uh, parasitic disorders and fungal infection. And then finally, foreign body reaction if the patient has had prior surgery. Uh, so the critical factors to help you differentiate those are the clinical history. Has the patient been treated for appendicitis? Uh, is there necrosis in the granulomata, maybe suggesting mycobacteria? Is there active inflammation or fistula suggesting Crohn's disease? Is there fibrosis and so forth? But what we have in this situation is, I think, uh, not uh, truly a granulomatous disorder in the conventional sense. I think we're looking at, in this case, uh, malacoplakia. 
Now, although this is most commonly encountered in the genital urinary tract, it can also involve other sites, uh, particularly the skin uh, and the GI tract on occasion. Uh, this is thought uh, etiologically to be related to some sort of an abnormal immune response to bacterial uh, infestation. Uh, and the bacteria most commonly associated with it, of course, is E. coli. So one would think uh, that uh, the uh, GI tract might be a relatively common site uh, for uh, the occurrence of malacoplakia, but it is not. Uh, the GU tract is uh, by far and away the most common site. Um, but these products, uh, these bacterial products, accumulate in the cell, forming what is thought, uh, what has been called the Michaelis Gutman body, uh, after his Dr. Ma doctors Michaelis and Gutman, who were the uh, second ones to more fully elucidate it after, after Dr. von Huntsman. Um, and these are a very helpful clue to diagnosis. They're bluish cytoplasmic inclusions, uh, and they will generally stain with an iron or calcium uh, stain. And of course, multi site involvement uh, may be seen. So just to give you a, a more classic view, here's a, a genital urinary site uh, in the urethra, uh, and you see this more diffuse uh, uh, inflammatory process, not particularly granulomatous, but uh, highly uh, histiocytic. Uh, lots of uh, uh, pink cytoplasm here um, and the typical histiocyte type nuclei. Uh, but then we can also see there are lots of these small blue inclusions or Michaelis Gutman bodies uh, in this lesion. Now, why did our uh, appendiceal lesion not have very many of those? Well, I think it's a fairly early stage um, uh, disorder, and uh, that may account for the uh, relative paucity of the uh, bacterial products uh, and uh, Michaelis Gutman bodies in that uh, specimen. So that's our case. quick case for today. Our final sign-out diagnosis is malacoplakia involving the appendix. Um, and our patient did have a cause for slight immune dysfunction uh, as we investigated the history. So uh, that sums up the case for today. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this and that uh, you'll subscribe uh, or like, give us your comments and feedback. We welcome those. And of course, uh, if you like it, please share it with your friends and colleagues who may be interested as well. And until next time, uh, thanks for joining us.